This is Ms. Lee, and today we're going to talk about reading and writing inequalities on a number line. We're going to start off with reading inequalities. Please make sure that you have your notes. If you don't have your notes, then take notes in your journal. This is actually a foldable that you have been given. So these are the four inequality symbols that we use, the less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and the greater than or equal to. And when you're graphing them on a number line, if you're graphing the less than, if you're saying x is less than some number, you're going to represent it on the number line with a open circle. And then because it's less than, think of an actual number line, the numbers that go to the left are smaller. That's what this is. Our line will go to the left. If it's greater than, then we still have an open circle but this time our line goes to the right because it's getting larger. The circle is placed at the value that you're talking about. If you're saying that x is greater than 3, then the circle is placed at the 3 on the number line. If you're saying on the first example that x is less than 5, then the circle is placed on 5 at the number line. Then you have the less than or equal to. And on a number line, the circle is going to be filled in because it's equal to the number. If you're saying that it's less than or equal to 3, the circle goes on 3 at the number line, and you fill it in because 3 is a solution. The solution also equals 3. And then because it's less, less than, your line goes to the left. And then the greater than or equal to will look like this. Again, the circle is going to be filled in because of this equal to sign right here. And because it's greater, our line goes to the right. So let's do some examples. We're going to graph the inequalities on the number line and then describe some possible solutions. So if x is less than 3, you're going to place your circle on 3 at the number line. It's not equal to, there's not that little line that means equal to. So our circle has to be empty or not filled in. And because x is less than 3, your line, your x line, will go to the left. So all of the values on the line represent x. If you're still confused about if it's less than or greater than, think of the alligator. On this example, the alligator's mouth is open towards the 3. That means the 3 is the largest number. Because it's the largest number, nothing is going to be to the right of it x is greater than 3 will look like this. Again, the circle is open because there is no equal sign. The alligator is eating the x, so the x is the furthest to the right. x is greater than, greater numbers go to the right, your x line goes to the right. x is less than or equal to 3. It's going to look like the first example, except the circle will now be filled in because of this equal line x is greater than or equal to 3, again, you're going to have a filled in circle because of the equal line. The alligator is eating the x, so the x line should be furthest to the right. Therefore, your line goes to the right of the 3. Now let's talk about some possible solutions. If x is less than 3, look at your number line. What values could x be? You know it cannot be 3 because the circle is not filled in, but it could be 2. It could be zero. The arrow shows that the line actually keeps extending to the left, so it could be negative three. It could even be numbers that you don't see on the number line, like negative ten. Could it be a five? No, because x is less than three and five is larger than three. What about some values for x is greater than three? Well, we know it can't be three because there's no equal line here. X has to be greater. So it could be four. It could be 12. It could even be 20 or 100. X is less than or equal to 3. Now we have the equal. We have the filled in circle. So X could be 3. And any number that is smaller than 3 could be a 0. It could be a negative 2. It could be a negative 10. X is greater than or equal to 3. Again, our circle is filled in. So it could equal 3 or any number that's larger than 3. It could even be 3 and a half, 3 and 5 tenths. It could be a 5, it could be a 12, anything that is greater than or equal to 3. 
We can use inequality symbols with variables to describe quantities that can have many values. These solutions can also be graphed on a number line. So again, this is a summary of what we just talked about. The inequalities. This is showing how you would represent the lines on a number line. And this is kind of cute. Does the bird get the worm? If the bird gets the worm, his belly is full. So we use a closed circle. This is for when you have the equal to's. If it's equal to, it gets the worm or it gets the number. If the bird does not get the worm, his belly is empty, so we use an open circle. So what inequality does each number line show? This is how we read the number lines. The first thing you want to do is see where your circle is at. The circle is at the 2. So there's my 2. My x line, or whatever variable you're using, is going to the right. It's smaller than the 2. So that means the alligator is going to eat the 2. And this is going to be your x. Now you just have to look at your circle. Is it an empty circle or is it a filled in circle? Our circle is filled in. That means 2 is included in the solution set. So our inequality would be x is less than or equal to 2. You could also switch this around and write the 2 first. 2 and make sure that the alligator is eating the 2 is greater than or equal to the x. In our second example, we have 1 and our x goes to the right. So the x is going to be larger because it's going to the right, the alligator is going to eat the larger number. Our circle is empty, so it is not equal to. So we could say that 1 is less than or equal to x. You could flip it around, write the x first. The alligator is going to eat the x because it's larger than the 1. So either one of these would be the correct inequality. In our third example, we're at 8, the circle is at the 8. Our x line is less than 8, it's to the left of 8, so the alligator is going to eat the 8. Do we need to put the equal line? No, because our 8, our circle is not filled in. So the inequality would be x is less than 8, or you could say that 8 is greater than x. So I'd like for you to work the next two on your own, pause the video, and come back and check your answers. Okay, let's see how you did. Did you say that 3 is less than x? Or did you say that x is greater than 3? Either one of these would be correct. And our second example, did you say that x is less than or equal to 6? Remember, the circle is filled in, so it has to be equal to. And I made a mistake up here in this one, didn't I? The circle is filled in, so it really should be 3 is less than or equal to x, or x is greater than or equal to 3. I hope you caught that. So now let's talk about graphing inequalities. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and graph each inequality on the number line. Number one, we have x is less than 3. So we know that we need to put a circle at the 3 on the number line. So here's my 3, I'm going to put my circle. Do I need to fill in my circle or do I leave it empty? Because there's no equal line, we're going to leave it an empty circle. And who is the alligator eating? The alligator is eating the 3. That means nothing can go past the 3. So our x line is not going to go to the right, our x line is going to go to the left. And I like to label it x. So this would be what the graph of x is less than 3 looks like. Number 2, x is greater than negative 5. So at the negative 5, we're going to draw our circle. Are we going to fill it in? No, there is no equal line. This time, the alligator is eating the x. So that means the x is going to be furthest to the right. So our line is going to go to the right. And we label that x. And there's the graph for x is greater than negative 5. Third example, x is less than or equal to negative 7. So here's our negative 7. Our circle goes on negative 7. Because of the equal line, we need to fill in our circle. It needs to be a solid circle. Now we're going to look at the alligator. It is eating the negative 7. 
So that means negative 7 is the largest number. Nothing can go past it to the right. So our x line goes to the left. And our last example, x is greater than or equal to 9. So we're going to label the 9. We're going to put our circle. Do we fill it in? Yep, we sure do because it is equal to. It has that little equals line. The alligator is eating the x, so the x has to be larger than 9. So the x line is going to go to the right. And that's what that graph would look like. Okay, now you're ready to go ahead and do the reading and graphing inequalities practice video.